standing at 193 centimeters tall and weighing 117 kilograms, it's easy to see why they call UFC heavyweight Francis Ngannou the predator. But for the fighter to stand in the bright lights of the Otkin today, he first needed to rely on someone's charity. Born in Cameroon, Ngannou made the long journey to France when he was just 26 to start a life where he could do more and be more. But he quickly found the Parisian streets were far from welcoming. Ngannou was homeless and sought solace with the foundation Le Chorba. From the moment he walked in, it was clear that he was so big and so strong, and we were looking at him with surprise. What he wanted was to help La Chorba. I asked him if he wanted to work in the kitchen, and he said, yes, I would love to do that and cut the vegetables. The funny thing is, the first day he worked there cutting the vegetables, he complained about hurting his back. The chef said this is not possible for someone this big to have back problems. Le Chorba Foundation in Paris helps people who need food, preparing 900 free meals a day, as well as food parcels for 600 families around the city. The foundation also visits the homeless to help them find a way to leave the streets and survive in the capital. And by listening to Nganu, they managed to tap into his passion. Francis, uh, he used to box at a sports club, and I asked him if he was looking for another sports club to box. So I went to my friend Lopez next door, and I told him, I have someone who's helping us that wants to do sports. Uh, I went to the gym, he was there, usually. I went down in the basement, I have a bag, two bags, with full of clothes, with um, uh, apparel that can box. And uh, he said to me, no, I cannot go with the bag. And I leave the bag here in the gym. And I said, why? And that took me like two seconds to realize that he could not keep the bag because he was homeless. Fernand Lopez, head coach and owner of France's number one MMA gym, let Ngannou train at the MMA factory for free and was impressed with his intelligence, speed and strength. Fernand took him under his wing and cultivated a relationship that would take him to another world far away from living on the streets. As soon as he started the first training, I knew there was something. Randomly, I had the television in the gym that day. And I was laughing because the camera was on him. And then the guy turned on me and said, why are you laughing? And I was like, this guy is not average guy. This guy is going to be a champion. And he was right. But Ngannou's heart was set on becoming boxing's next Mike Tyson. So it came down to Vernon to convince him that MMA was his destiny. I was like, look, the boxing is good for you. Perfect. But to be honest, I want to give you what is giving you the faster you can the income, which is the MMA. I was giving him the access to the best boxing gym in Paris. Saying to Francis, okay, now you promise me, you just have to stick doing the MMA a little bit. And then at some point you had a fight. And then he fought and he was happy to fight and he made money. The deal paid off and the transformation was complete. And in 2015, Ngannou earned his place in the sports premier organization but the fame, attention, and the money that came along with the UFC didn't discourage Ngannou from what was important to him. He kept coming here. He continued to shake hands with people. He continued to find the time to help us. If he saw someone without money, he would give it to him without anyone noticing. He doesn't have a big head. This is the biggest quality of this guy. He really has a big heart. He knows to appreciate it if you offer him a plate of food, He'll be very careful to finish it because he knows that there are people that don't have anything to eat. He has kept good values in his life and I hope he will continue to do so. But I don't worry, I'm sure he will.